This is Tash Lagwadi, and what you're about to listen to is the narrated audio version, MP3 version, that's um, available on DV of my new uh, information product. It's titled 10 Storified Yoruba Proverbs for Children. Um, as I've explained in the material I put online, I decided to create this um, educational series because I discovered that my own kids, I'm married to a woman who's an evil woman, she's from Obosi in Anambra State. And my children already comprehend the Igbo language quite a lot. And my first son, he's 15, actually does communicate in Igbo language every once in a while with the mother. Now, they also understand Yoruba, having schooled in a public school initially. But the truth is, I realize that the richness of most of our languages is found in the use of proverbs. There's deeper. Then you're as good as ready to do business in that environment. Uh, nobody wants, to, I mean, you don't have to become a professor in French to function in French speaking environment. As a business person, for instance, I cross the borders all the time. And my ability to communicate in both languages has opened doors of so many opportunities for me. I have clients in both countries, big clients and small ones. And because I can communicate in both languages, people are naturally attracted to me. The same thing happens with the Yoruba language. I am not trying to say that I'm a teacher of the language or an expert in the language, but I speak the language. I'm competent in, comp in co expressing myself in the language and I want to pass that competence to my children. Now, I believe that you want to do the same for your own kids and you want to also become better. I am opportune to interact with people who are extremely well versed in Yoruba language, very, very, very deep knowledge, traditionally and culturally. And at the same time, I also have access to resources, books, and other things that have opened my eyes to a lot of proverbs that are useful for day to day uh, moral instruction. So that is where I'm coming from with this. So this is not an, I don't intend to tell anybody that I'm some kind of world class. Uh, Yoruba, whatever, teacher. Okay, so I'll get started with that. So the Owe Le Shinro, or Le Owe, the Yoruba son, Owe La Finwa. That's basically, well, let me translate it literally. The proverbs are the horses for words, okay? And words are the horses for proverbs. In other words, they are the medium. Each one is the medium for the other. But basically, when they, you cannot, when you are at a loss for words to, to communicate your intended meaning, the Yoruba person will use proverbs to pass his message. And quite often, proverbs tend to be use fewer words and at the same time have huge impact in terms of meaning passed on. And you will find that for, out from all, some of the examples we're going to listen to in this um, series. So I'll just go on to the first slide. This is Tash Lagwadi, and what you're about to listen to is. Owe le shinoro, oro le shinowe, bi oro ba soni, owe la finwa. This is Tash Lagwadi, and what you're about to listen to is. En kule lo tawa, ile ni ase ningbe. Some people will, will say this way, I was in UI, and I remember a lot of my friends would say, it's the same thing. It's just a matter of semantics. And what that means in the literal translation is the enemy lies in wait in the backyard. The traitor lives in the home. Now I know you can easily think of so many examples of this in your personal life or probably I mean stories you've heard or movies you've watched. In our case, the example was given here, I am a kid, has to do with a, a movie we actually watched. It's a very popular, uh, it's a hit um, um, what do you call it now? I think it's this what is this TV series uh, called Arrow, Green Arrow. And so, but what I've done is to turn it into a little bit of story and wrap something around it. So. Some people will, will say it this way. I was in UI and I remember a lot of my friends. The next proverb 